Hey Cove Kids, it's Mr. Banana, and I am super, super sad, and I am super, super happy at the same time. Super sad because we are going into a new uh, month and a new week, and so we're not gonna talk about forgiveness anymore, uh, but keep applying it to your life, and we're not going to uh, continue to memorize Colossians 3.13, but I hope that it's in your heart so that you could apply forgiveness in your life. Just some of the times, no! all the time and as you guys are still at home and hanging out with each other as a family i trust that you guys are applying forgiveness with your brother and sister with your parents and just with everybody in your household make sure to give them a big hug and a big kiss today i cannot wait until we meet together i miss you guys so much and i am looking forward to the day when we can gather in here but in the meantime we are online you guys are on those computers and phones and doohickeys and doodads and whatchamacallit thingamajigs and we are continuing to learn the Bible. This month is a new theme and that is why I'm super, 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 super happy because our theme is upside down. Oh yeah, that hurt my back a little bit. Okay. Upside down. Why are we talking about upside down? Because we are learning that Jesus changes everything. In the book of Acts, we see that there are his disciples and they're going out and they're doing awesome things for God. They are helping people. They are being a good example and being a good example of what it looks like to be like and to live like and to act like Jesus. And there were people out there when they were looking at all the changes that were happening in their world, they said, because you are teaching about Jesus, because you are preaching about Jesus, our world is totally turning upside down. And so if Jesus is changing your life, you are reading your Bible, you are praying, you are obeying, then your world is going to change. People are going to see change in you and they're going to say, wow, God is amazing. Why? Because you are showing them what God looks like. Isn't that awesome? Give each other in your family and in your household a high five. Give me one of those virtual high fives. Ready? Ah, okay, that was awesome. You guys are doing an amazing job, by the way, just uh, being a part of these videos. Our topic for this month is humility. What is humility? Humility is putting others first by giving up what you deserve. Again, humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. And we're going to talk about all kinds of stories in the Bible. Some of them my favorite story, but I'm going to be honest with you. One of these stories, it's not one of my favorite stories in the Bible. It is actually sad, but it ends up really, really happy. And so tune in for that. But the memory verse we are learning this month comes from the book of Philippians. And not Philippines, not Philippines, Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Now, let's look at this verse together. Philippians 2, 13 says, Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. And so as we memorize this verse, let's do what we do uh, in Treasure Cove and let's erase some of these words so that we can memorize it. What is the first word that I want to get rid of? Let's get rid of the word anything. And then we're going to get rid of the word humble. Oh, I'm taking out one of the most important words in the verse. And then we're going to also take out the word Philippines, not Philippines, Philippians. 
Now let's say that together. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be, now what's that word? Humble, value others more than yourselves. And what is that book of the Bible? Is it Philippines? No, it is Philippians 2, 13. Let's get rid of some more words. The word I want to get rid of is, can you guess what it is? It is value, yes. And then we're going to get rid of because. And then we're going to get rid of ahead. Ah, oh, that's a lot of words. I'm getting nervous. But let's get rid of one more. We are going to get rid of the word proud. Don't let's so let's recite this again without those words in those blanks. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. OK, let's get rid of some more words. There's a word in there that is repeated twice. It's kind of a two worded word. It is don't. Exactly. You guys are so smart. We're going to get rid of the word don't. And then let's get rid of the word more. And then we're going to get rid of the word it. I'm getting so nervous. We're getting rid of a lot of words. And I think the next time we do this, I'm going to get rid of all the words. And hopefully you have this verse. Memorize Philippians 2, 3. What is the first word? Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. Not Philippines. Philippians. Yeah, I know that joke is getting a little old, but I love it. I, I, I like to humor myself. OK, here we go. Now let's get rid of all the words. Hopefully you guys memorize this verse. Let's do it one more time. Una mas. What's the first word again? Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be Humble, exactly, that's that word. Value others more than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. Great job, kids. Continue to memorize this verse and recite it to your parents, recite it to your siblings, uh, recite it to um, just to each other. Maybe call your grandma and grandpa and say hi and tell them, I memorized a new verse today, Philippians 2, 3. And in this verse, we are learning to be humble. I am super excited. Why? Because it is time to worship and and praise God. And we have a new song. It is called Can't Stop, Won't Stop. And we are going to start with the instructional video and then we're gonna go into the full mix. So get up out of your seat, find some space. Let's learn how to do this, uh, the movements to this video. And then let's uh, praise the Lord together. Hey guys, here are the dance moves for Can't Stop, Won't Stop. We start. Whoa, oh, 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 I can't stop. Whoa, oh, 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 I won't stop. Whoa, oh, 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 I can't stop, won't stop, I'll never stop. Singing your praises, hey, hey. Singing your praises, hey, hey. And now for the verses. In the morning when the sun comes up, I feel your goodness and mercy. I'm overwhelmed with your amazing love. I feel it all around me and I can't help but sing. So for the second half of the chorus, we go, I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praises left. Right, right, left, praises, left, right, right, left. Now for the bridge. 
Every time you lift your leg up, you do it on the word can't. I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praise, singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praise, singing your praise. Now let's put it all together. You give me joy that I can't contain. You got me dancing and shouting. I'm overwhelmed with your amazing grace. I feel it all around me. And I can't help but see. I can't stop. I won't stop. I can't stop, won't stop. I'll never stop singing your praises. Singing your praises. I can't stop, won't stop. Never gonna stop singing your praise. Singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop. Never gonna stop singing your praise. Singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop. Never gonna stop singing your praise. Singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop. Never gonna stop singing your Wasn't that a cool worship song? Can't stop, won't stop, never stop singing your praise. Yeah, that was an awesome song. You guys did an amazing job dancing to it. Um, and we're just gonna continue to worship as we study one of my 
Favorite stories in the Bible. It is kind of one of my favorite stories in the Bible, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. It is a sad story, but it begins with celebration. And then next week, we're going to find out what happens to make things all better. Take your Bibles and open it to the book of Matthew, chapter 26, 36. And we're going to go all the way to 56 before we do that. Let me give you a little bit of review of what we are going to talk about in this story. We see that Jesus has been welcoming all kinds of people that the religious leaders, they didn't like Jesus hanging out with them. They were tax collectors and they were sinners. And these uh, religious leaders, they even called these people dogs. Is that a good thing? No, it's not. Do you think that makes God happy? No, it doesn't. But Jesus loves just some people. No, Jesus loves everybody. Somebody say everybody. Even the people that are rejected, even the people that mess up. And I am so glad because Mr. Banana, <laughs> I mess up a lot. And when Mr. Banana was your age, I did a, made a lot of mistakes and I did a lot of things that didn't make God happy. But I am so glad because Jesus, he went to that lost person, which was me, and he brought me into his family. And now I am super happy and I want to tell people about Jesus. Don't you? We see in this story that Jesus comes into Jerusalem and he was super popular with, the, with all of these people that he helped, but the religious leaders did not like what Jesus did. When Jesus came into the, uh, Jerusalem, he came in riding on this donkey and people had their palm branches and they don't have uh, fireworks like we have today. They didn't have like uh, noisemakers like wah, 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 wah. no, they didn't do any of that stuff, which would be cool. But they had palm branches and they were waving their palm branches at Jesus and they were saying, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they were super happy that Jesus was walking into Jerusalem. This was the Sunday before the Passover and they were celebrating Jesus. But there was one thing that was happening. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, he does something really, really bad and he plots something against Jesus goes to the religious leaders and says, I want to, I'm going to hand over Jesus to you so that you could arrest him because he has done bad things. Did he do bad things? No, but they were trying to trick Jesus. And so they gave Judas some money. They gave Judas some money so that he can betray him. Do you think that that made God happy? No, it made him sad. It makes Jesus sad, but Judas did it anyways. And then we see Jesus going to a garden, and this garden is called Gethsemane. Somebody say Gethsemane together with me in one, two, three. Gethsemane. So he goes to this garden, and before he goes to this garden, he goes to his disciples, and he says, Okay, disciples, I want you to watch, and I want you to pray. What does he want them to do? He wants them to watch and he wants them to pray. And so he goes off into this garden and he starts to pray. And he prays a prayer that says, God, if it be so, let this cup pass from me, but let it not be my will. Let it be your will. Let it be your will, God. And so he's praying and praying and praying. And then he goes and checks up on the disciples and guess what they are doing. Yes, they are sleeping. And if they're anything like Mr. Banana, they are snoring. And they are totally asleep. And Jesus wakes them up and says, why are you guys asleep? I told you to watch and pray. And they said, oh, what? Oh, okay, yeah, we'll get up and we'll watch and pray. So Jesus goes back into the garden and he's praying and he prays again. Father, 
If it be so, please let this cup pass from me, but not my will, whose will be done, children. God's will be done. Yes. And so as he is praying, he goes back to the disciples. And guess what they're doing? They are sleeping. Let me hear those loud snores. Yeah, they are sleeping. And Jesus says, wake up. What did I tell you to do? I told you to watch and do what? And pray. Watch and pray. And so they get up and then Jesus goes back. And Jesus is praying and he is praying, Father, if it be so, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, your will be done. Shouldn't that be a prayer that we pray all the time? Not my will, but yours be done. But then we see that he comes back and they're sleeping. And we see in Matthew chapter 26, verse 45 to 46. Go ahead and grab your Bible and let's read this together. He says, Then he returned to his disciples. He said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is about to get handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Here comes the one who is handing me over to them. And who was that person? That person was Judas. Judas, wa Judas walks up with the rest of the religious leaders, the rest of this mob that is going to um, arrest Jesus. And he goes up to Jesus and he says, buddy, old pal, you know, man, he probably doesn't say that in the Bible, but <laughs> I'm paraphrasing here. Buddy, old pal, and he goes up to Jesus and he gives him a light kiss on the cheek. And as soon as Judas gives him a kiss on the cheek. That was a signal for the mob to come in to arrest Jesus. And he says, why are you arresting me? Why are you arresting me? And the religious leaders said, we are arresting you because you said that you're going to take this temple down and you're going to raise it up again. And you also claim to be God, which is true, by the way. But they didn't know that. And they arrested him and they were going to take him into the court system. And then Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, takes a sword and goes to one of the soldiers and cuts his ear off and plops his ear, uh, drop on the floor. And what does Jesus Jesus do. Jesus takes the soldier's ear and puts it back on him and completely heals him. Somebody say, dun, dun, dun. And so he, they were super happy that he, they did that. And what strikes me is that Jesus, even though he was getting arrested, he still helped the soldier that was arresting him. And he said, Peter, now not, don't do that. We're not here to help people, to, to hurt people. We're here to help people. And so uh, they took Jesus off into the court system. Next week, we're going to see what happens to Jesus when he goes into the court system. Do they find Jesus guilty? Do they, what do they do if they do find Jesus guilty? We're going to learn more about that next week. I can't wait to see you. But what is the bottom line that we are learning today throughout this entire story? And that bottom line is put others first. Somebody say put others first. Put others first. We see that Jesus, he put others first. He is praying for this world. He is helping people. He is being a servant to people, even though he gets arrested for it. He still puts others first. And I want to encourage you guys, put others first. I want to encourage you guys while you guys are at home, Sometimes your schedule has totally changed and it is just really strange for you to uh, get uh, shut in at home and to be separated from everybody. But this is a great opportunity to do what Jesus did. What did he do in the garden? He prayed. Yes, he prayed and prayed and prayed. And I want to encourage you, take some time to pray alone. Take some time to pray with your siblings, with your parents, with your family, and let's see God do some awesome things. Speaking of prayer, let's pray. 
Father, I thank you for this story in the Bible because it shows us who Jesus is. He is a man of prayer. And the disciples were asleep, but Jesus was awakened. He prayed, please help us not to fall asleep in prayer, but to be up in prayer and to pray for our family members and to pray for our neighbors and to pray for our world, especially through this difficult time. It is easy for us to think about us, 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 me, me, me during this time, but help us to put others first because Jesus, you put others first and all of God's people said, amen.